Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Software Tutorialer. So I know it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video, apologies for that, but really I think I covered pretty much everything in Video Studio X6 that I wanted to cover. So now I'm moving on to the brand new version of Video Studio which is X7 and this was released on the 5th of March 2014 and here it is. This is basically the interface of the program and this is what it looks like. So you can see it does look different, it all looks very different at the top. It now says Corel Video Studio X7 up there where it didn't before. And the colour scheme's changed and the layout has changed as well. Um, so it does look different to the previous version and it has a lot more to offer. So what I'm going to do in this video is basically run through everything it's got and give you a tour of the software to show you where everything is and what everything basically does. So first of all, we're here on the capture page. It's got three main tabs at the top, the capture, edit, and share, the three main steps of video editing. So this is capture, the very first page, and you can see here there is a list of different things that you can do. And the previous version did actually have this, but they have been adjusted and enhanced in various ways. For a start, you can see here there is an HD button, and this allows you to preview your project in HD, where the other ones couldn't, so that is a nice little feature which X7 offers. So, starting off here, we've got Capture Video and DV Quick Scan, and this is basically where you can get some of your footage off your camera, whether it's a mini DV or a DVD camera, or even something else will be compatible. Um, this is where you can bring your footage off the camera and bring it into Video Studio Editor. So that is what these two do, I'll just show you quickly. So what you do is you plug in your mini DV camera or DVD camera or even something else which is compatible with the software and then it would recognize it on here and it would load up your footage and then you can then capture your video down here choose a file name and where you want it to save to and then what you do then is you bring all of your footage into the editor and then it will be ready to edit. So that is basically what this area of the program does. Um, moving on you can import from digital media so this could be a DVD, it could be off your hard drive or even off somewhere else entirely. Uh, then you've got your stop motion. Now if you had done a lot of stop motion pictures, so if you would taken a load of pictures over a period of time, for example a building construction, that would work really well, then you can just go on the stop motion function on this software and you can drag it all together and then you can edit it briefly. You don't have to do much for a stop motion, you just remove the photos that you don't want and you can do a bit of enhancing here and there and then you'd put it all together and you'd create a stop motion and stop motions I really like, I do recommend doing them because they're a lot of fun and they do look very good at the end. And here we've got the stream capture which is what I'm using at the moment to create this video. Um, this is where you can um, record your programs that you're recording, anything on your desktop, it's really handy to do. Um, if you want to make tutorials like I'm doing now, then it's a brilliant function because you can do uh, 30 frames per second recordings with WMV. Um, and to be honest, I think it's a really good function and it's all integrated into Video Studio X7, so you don't have to run another program alongside it. So it also speed, keeps your computer faster because it's not having to run more than one program at a time. So this is basically the capture area and moving on to the edit area. So you'll see here is the library and there are a few more different things. These are all new where the other ones weren't in there. These are though the same as the previous versions but they've just added really to the library of what you get with the software which is nice. And I think there is also some new sounds in there as well. So there's a lot there already there for you to use um, when creating your projects. Okay so that is your library and that's where everything's saved and the rest of that is pretty much the same as the previous version. Again we've got the HD tab here so you can preview what you're doing in HD which is really good I think. And then moving down the list here we've got our instant projects. So I'll just let that load and then you can see here that there is a whole different load of instant projects that you can use when editing. Um, and instant projects are good for new users as well as advanced users um, because really what it does is it gives you a good head start of making your project. I'll just drag one in here and you can see it's already got everything there. It's got your, your sound, your text, your overlay tracks and your main tracks and it's also got a transition in there as well. So you can add to it or you can edit to it 
and really it just gives you a head start of making your own project and or if you don't want to use the instant project you just want to use it as a guide then that is a good thing as well so you could make your project based on an instant project okay moving on transitions the transitions as you can see have changed a bit and there are more added to it so it's enhanced it um, transitions I do like but I think too many of them in one project can overdo it so it's really nice to have the ability to add transitions to your projects um, because it can make them look a lot more professional um, although a lot of people would just recommend that you use the fades and that kind of thing fade to black or a uh, cross fade um, but yeah if you're just doing a home movie or something then all these fancy things are brilliant for doing that um, and it also makes your videos look a lot more professional okay so moving on title this is where you can add all the text into your videos whether it's a subtitle or an information uh, piece of text or if it's the beginning or end of your video this is where you can do all that and in options here you'll see that you can change everything you can change your font type how long you want it to display for how big it is what color it is uh, what angle it's going to be at uh, and then there's a whole load of other things as well whether it's just a single title multiple title a text backdrop um, borders shadows and transparency and all that other stuff and you can also add subtitles here as well okay moving on this is new color pattern this is the new color patterns which are available in video studio x7 so before where it was just the plain colors which is just here you can see that we've got all these different plain colors and you can also add more to this um, they have now added color patterns which is very nice because you can see that these are a lot more adventurous than just one solid color so this can really add to your projects as well so you've got all these different styles okay drop down menu you've got the same as before the frames objects and flash animation but they have been added to as you can see all these are new these were not here in the previous version and we've also got the frames likewise there's some new ones in there and the flash animation same again some new ones in there okay FX this is the effects you can add onto your videos and images so there's all kinds of things here you can see active camera to make it look like you're holding the camera if it's like if you've actually been filmed on a tripod or if you're adding it to a still picture it makes it come to life more and there's a whole load of different things auto level so you can auto level the color auto exposure anti shake if you've got if you have been using a camera and not on a tripod you can remove some of that shake with that function which is very handy uh, and a whole load of different fancy things uh, comic fx ripple fx punch flip flash remover so there's a load of things to play around with here a lot of fun and it can also make your videos look really nice and very good to look at okay moving on track motion this was in Video Studio X6 and this is where you can do something like add an image or a title onto your project and make it follow something in a video for example so if you were filming a car moving then you can add a piece of text attach it to the car moving and then the text will follow that car moving in the video which is a really nice feature um, and obviously you can do it for other stuff as well as just cars so if it's someone running then you can put um, a banner on top of them showing their name or something or some statistics about them maybe their age how tall they are and it will follow them running so that is a really nice feature and I'll be showing you that in a tutorial sometime in the future okay so that is pretty much covering the basics of this area of the edit tab um, down here we have once again got the recording area so we've got stop motion like we had in capture screen capture snapshot voiceover voiceover is a very handy if you're going to do narration over a video the capture video like we've already seen dv quick scan digital media mobile device and import from a cd they are basically all in the capture area okay moving on again we've got the audio area here and this is where you can change the levels of your audio where the audio sound is coming from which angle it's coming from and this is basically playing with all the different aspects of the sound in your videos so this is very handy and again I'll be going into more depth of this later on moving on here we've got the auto music and this is where basically you it will just add the music to your projects without you having to really do much um, so we'll just update this later so we can move on and you can see here that you can auto add the music 
um, it will auto trim it to fit your project size and there's a whole load of stuff there which you can play around with um, and you can just choose any sound to go on your project and it's just a lot easier really if you're not really that used to the software yet so that's something you should really look at uh, again moving on track motion like we've already seen and adding subtitles to your videos okay moving on again this is the share tab part three of the editing and this whole interface has actually changed a lot since the previous version it is a lot more easier to read a lot more easy to understand and it also shows you some more useful things like how much space you've got available and how much the project which you're about to export is going to use so that's very handy so this is the area where you would save a project to your computer and not somewhere like on a DVD or online or something. So once you've selected the file type that you want to use, then it will give you some information about it here. For example, it is 1080p, 25 frames per second, and it's an MPEG-4 file. Um, and then there's a whole load of other things here about the audio and other stuff. Down here you can choose what you want it to be called, so it obviously defaults to untitled, but then you can choose anything you want and where you want it to be exported to. Um, so you choose somewhere on your hard drive and then you would export your video to that area. Other things you can do is export it onto a mobile device or back onto your video camera. So you choose what it is you're going to put it onto and then you do everything again down here, choose your name, file size, um, file type and also where you want it to be and then you would just render it and it would go onto that that device or whatever you're going to put it onto. Moving down we've got the web section here so this is where you can put it onto YouTube, Facebook, Flickr or Vimeo. And then what you do is you would log in and then you can upload it directly to that online service. Down here you can save it to a Blu-ray or a DVD and there's a few other things as well even AVC, HD and SD card so there's some nice features. Once you've selected one of these it will then run through a wizard and it will help you all the way through and then you can add different things like subtitles um, and your chapter points if it's going onto a DVD. Um, so there's a whole load of stuff here which I'll go into more depth of later. Moving down again we've got 3D. Now this was new in I think it was Video Studio X5. Um, you can now export your files and your videos in 3D. So this is really good and you can also upload 3D files to YouTube as well and YouTube will recognize that it is 3D. Um, so if for example you want it, you were planning on doing your video in 3D, you'd filmed it in a way that you'd make it work in 3D, for example you're making stuff come close to the camera, then this is perfect because it's going to add the 3D to your video, you then put your glasses on um, and then your, your video just turns into 3D, it's fantastic, um, it's something you should really try if you haven't done it yet. Um, obviously you will need to get some glasses to be able to see the function. Um, unless you have got a 3D screen. Um, so yes, again here we have got the file types and the profile properties, everything there. The depth of 3D, so this is how, how 3D you want it. Um, file name again, file location and then you just render it and then all it does is it, it would render your video and then it's there for you to watch. So it is very simple, they definitely simplified it a lot. It's a lot better than it used to be so I really recommend this now. Um, and yeah, this is that is pretty much um, a condensed tour of Video Studio X7. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video, and it's made you realise if you want to get it or not. Hopefully it has made you want to get it because it has got a lot more features than the previous version did, um, and it has got a lot more enhanced features as well. So it's got still got the features which the previous version had, but there it's so enhanced and a lot better than it was before. And now the whole program is a lot quicker to use as well. And with everything going to HD nowadays, it's good that it's keeping up with the times. And it's added the HD preview, which is one of my favourite features. It may be quite a simple feature, but I really do like it. I think it's brilliant that you can preview stuff in HD before it's rendered. Um, so yes, that is it. That is my quick tour of Video Studio X7. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be uploading a lot more tutorials on Video Studio X7 soon. So if you haven't subscribed already then please do remember to do that and also please dislike or like this video. Thanks very much everyone. Oh and just before I go, just reminding you that I have put the link to buy Video Studio X7 in the description below so make sure you have a look at that.